What do the rich buy that the poor don't even know is available for purchase? Kidnapping insurance. Can confirm. I worked for a place where the CEO was very hands on and would oftentimes fly to countries that were less than stable to sell the product. In case of kidnapping we had insurance for him. For anyone else that traveled with him that might get grabbed. And contingency plans in place for what we needed to be doing and who to contact in case this happens. I worked for a major company that had employees in sketchy places, war zones. We had a blanket K and R, kidnap and ransom, policy for every employee. Basically, if any employee was kidnapped they'd pay out X millions to professional negotiators to try and free us. I never got a chance to use it. Partially because I worked in Virginia the whole time. Private jet timeshares. For those not quite rich enough for their own private jet. Or those rich people wanting to be a bit frugal. The really rich motto. If it fly. Floats or. You rent it. It always makes way more sense to me that a rich person would lease a car than buy it. First and foremost. They always want the latest and greatest. People may think Steve Jobs was eccentric for leasing a new car every 6 months. But it's a pretty, I'm solid way to ensure you'll probably never be left stranded on the road and you won't be bothering with buying and selling constantly. And X200B. Obviously there are exceptions for classic cars and supercars and that blah. Time. All that crap you do. Commuting. Grocery shopping. Cooking. Cleaning your house. Waiting on hold. Paying bills. All those chunks of your life that are eaten up by minutiae, rich people buy out of all that routine garbage. Time is all you really get in your life. Rich people buy it back. This is really not a bad way to look at life even if you aren't wealthy. I have a kid and a small business to run. So now when the guy I met in economics class 9 years ago hits me up on Facebook. And asks me to drive 45 minutes through traffic to catch up over a beer. I really have to think about whether it's a good use of my time. Something they do that most people don't know about is buy entire libraries at once. My sister used to work at a bookstore. And told me someone came in and wanted to furnish their library with a library size purchase of books. They just wanted cherry picked best sellers left to the discretion of the people working there. It sounded wild. Some wealthy people also buy books as decoration. With no intent of reading most of them. They buy books from wholesalers by the linear foot. Specifying how the books look on the shelves, size, color, material of spine, etc. Without any regard for what the books actually are. They just need to fill wall space in library office rooms in their homes. That sounds so sad. How can you buy a book and not read it? If you're willing to fork out $35. 000 for the player and $500 per showing. You can watch films that are currently in theaters in your own private home theater. Wow who would have thought a private showing is only twice as much as a normal movie ticket? Yeah I mean if you just skip the snack bar at the theater it evens out to the same cost basically. Landing 747s in small airports. I grew up around Lexington. KY. The region is huge on horses. Particularly thoroughbred horses. The entire city is surrounded by horse farms. And these farms breed some of the best racing horses in the world. The rich and famous will often come here to buy thoroughbreds to add to their breeding stock. One such person is a Shia from Dubai, I think. Comma who owns his own private 747. Now the local airport isn't rated for 747s. And it's not legal to land one there unless it's an emergency. The Sheikh doesn't care though and lands his 747 there anyways. The airport finds him every time he does this. Which he is totally fine with paying. I've been told that many of the upgrades to the airport over the years were almost entirely funded with money from those fines. In London rich people figured out it was cheaper to just park on the streets illegally and just pay the fines every day than to pay for parking in the city. So the city started clamping cars. 
so the rich people started paying people to go and pay the fine for the car to be unclamped before they wanted to leave. Underage. Parties on private islands. Don't forget. Jeffrey Epstein committed suicide. S. If you were surprised by his suicide. Imagine how surprised he was. Private boarding gate of certain airports. Complete with showers. A spa. Full bar. Lounge. Food. A bed. Gym. Sauna etc. Total privacy. Your luggage is scanned and taken through security by a concierge. And you're driven to the plane in a BMW 8 series. Lax has them now. Yeah but then when you get on the plane you're still stuck in the cattle car of first class with all the other plebeians. The animals in the back are even still breathing the same air as you. Clearly a private jet is the only civilized way to travel. Specialized household staff. When someone is truly mega rich. Running their household takes the same complexity as running a small to mid-size company. And management is skilled and compensated accordingly. Don't think butler think head of operations at a luxury hotel. Double quote. The staff that household managers oversee can be really specialized as well. For example. Larry Ellison has his own personal curator to oversee his collection of Asian art. They do things like. Advise on the purchase and sale of arts in his collection oversee storage and display of art housed on his property oversee process of lending art for storage and display at museums. The curator will often have their own staff to conduct actual conservation work, art transport, art installation, etc. So if you've already got an in-house crew of 7 people focused on your art collection alone, imagine how big your entire household staff is. That's why you've got a household manager. Everyone knows about mega yachts. But the very rich also enjoy their own trains. Or at the very least private super luxurious train cars. With their budgets it isn't expensive to rent space on freight lines and an engine. Assuming they don't own their own. Sometimes a group of friends will hook their private cars together and motor around a continent having a big party. Pet cloning. Ex-boss was getting his dog cloned for $100k. Oh. I've heard of this. There's a company in Texas that does it kinda regularly apparently now. $25k for a cat. $50k for a dog. It's something like a $1.2k deposit just for them to send your vet the kit to obtain bio samples and to store the material. You pay the rest of it whenever you're ready to clone your critter. Private performances with big name artists. I was on a yacht in the Virgin Islands and some mega yacht owner pretty close to us had Christina Aguilera flown in to perform for his guest on the mega yacht. We were close enough to see the performance, not close enough to pretend to be part of the party. I had a buddy who hired a driver. Got him to get a chauffeur's license. And then made sure his Jaguar was long enough to meet criteria as a limo and then he could legally drink in the back seat. When I traveled with him internationally, someone met us at the door when we were dropped off, and they walked us to our plane. None of that customs security stuff occurred. I don't know. If you were rich, you could afford a person to fix that. Unique items. Occasionally you see in the news stuff like hat used in some popular movie auctioned for $80. 000, 000 inches or 5,000 year old Egyptian statue auctioned for two dollars. 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000 inches and I think what kind of auction do you even go to buy that kind of thing? Standalone ice machines. These are under counter appliances whose sole purpose is to make ice. And not just any ice. The cheaper, two dollars. 000 plus, ones make normal crescent shaped cubes. The more expensive one, $3. 000 plus, make clear ice in cube shapes. And then pallet ice makers, $4. 000 plus, which is the chibble ice like Sonic has. These are the more entry level models to boot. Some break 5 digits. 
I used to work for a manufacturer of these and at some point a lady was arguing with me because we were shipping a replacement part ground instead of next day air and she made a snide comment about if it were my ice machine she'd bet it wouldn't take this long. I told her. Mom. I don't have an ice machine. She snapped back all proud like she cornered me with. Then how do you get ice? I told her from an ice tray and she replied with. Well I don't have to do that. Yeah well for the next 3-5 business days you do. I do not miss that job at all. I'm not rich but due to the fact that my dad was a top level govt official and I went to a very elite private boarding school. I hung out with some fabulously wealthy kids, i.e. rich parents. What surprised me is what a portion of very rich people don't buy. I noticed that a surprising percentage of very wealthy people don't buy super fancy cars. For example one family who owned a world famous beverage company all drove around in nondescript SUVs or minivans. Some rich people are extremely flashy but others are almost manic about not being seen as crass. And to those people. A supercar is crass but apparently having a 10 million dollar home in Palm Beach is not crass at all. You think your platinum card is cutting it? Please. Centurion is the way to go. Comma. Access. Money buys you access to people. Places and events. It also buys you in accessibility. I know a couple of billionaires. Both have yachts. That way they can get away from everyone else and just bring in the people they want to spend time with. The planet isn't that big. So my friend said he kept bumping into the same people all over the place. Gstard. Barbados. Wherever. Same crowd of loaded people in the same restaurants and hotels. In the end he bought a yacht. Kitted it out like he wanted it. And just flew in his pals. Relationships. I once worked at an Olympic horse ranch in Colorado. And the owner was from Seattle and was friends with someone that played guitar W. Kurt Cobain. Then talking to one of the writers. They had been to a party over the weekend that Mark Zuckerberg was at. That's when it hit me, when you're rich. You just know everyone. Or know someone that knows them. Six degrees of separation is only for the masses. The elites is closer to two or one. Networking is a powerful thing. And once you make it to a certain tier of people. You just know how to get to hold of them or which person you know who does. When I was in the Air Force I worked at a pilot training base. We trained Americans as well as people from other countries. We had a 21 year old Saudi prince and staff come through our training. He was a really cool dude and since we packed his gear he was always hanging out with us. Showed us some pics one day. Here are some things dude had. His own tiger and a guy on staff full time to care for it. A private plane with his name on the side. Huge yacht crazy amounts of jewelry. But the craziest thing I've ever seen someone own. Like actually own. Is he told us he would actually purchase a virginity of women and be there first. Tax deductions. This year when we used TurboTax we were looking like we owed a few hundred dollars. But our company's accountant offered us a good rate. So we thought we'd see what he could do for us. And somehow we ended up getting a refund of a couple thousand dollars. I really have no idea what he did. But we'll take it. <laughs>